Thank you for coming to this, this important educational forum. And uh, if I can take a few minutes to describe sort of how it transpired and why the Department of Education, along with many of our friends in the White House Domestic Policy Group in Education, have come to LSU. Uh, the issue of college costs, affordability, value, lack of information in the marketplace for students, parents, taxpayers, uh, is at an all-time high. And we know that student indebtedness has broken one trillion dollars a year, surpassing credit card indebtedness as the nation's second leading in debt, debt load, impacting our younger generation of students or graduates. Uh, so about five years ago, five and a half years ago, I was fortunate to have an opportunity to, to, to meet with the president with nine other university presidents and five public university presidents to talk about this issue, along with Secretary Duncan. There was a great deal of concern about the indebtedness, about college affordability, when it stops, how high does an institution need to go, what do we do as a nation with regard to the status that we now recognize we're in. And I'll point out that this perhaps is the first Department of Education to recognize that the United States is no longer the leader in world higher education that we were. In fact, we're one of the few nations, if not the only nation in the OECD, where the older generation has more college degrees than the younger generation. And let me point out that statistic, that we rank first in the world in college degrees for 55 to 64 year olds, and we rank 11th in the world in college degrees for 25 to 34 year olds. And if this goes unaddressed, we, by the year 2016 we will drop to 16th, by the year 2020 we will drop to nearly 21st in the world in college degrees for a younger generation. So the urgency of this issue, the urgency of tackling what we're doing in higher education has never been more important. And having said that, that we now have the federal government very involved and concerned about this issue, as they should be. Because in 1972, when the last great debate in higher education took place, we came up with the idea that the federal government was simply going to augment states. It was going to be one that supplied additional funding to states, and states were going to be the primary supplier of revenues and support to higher education. Today, we find that this has not been the case. And in fact, states are down to $70 billion in support for higher education from a high of $90 billion. And the federal government is up to 150, 160 plus, even 170 when you factor in tax credits and other additional revenues to supply to higher education. So the primary supplier of revenues to higher education is indeed the federal government. So when people ask about why are you interested in, to the Department of Education or why is the president increasingly interested, I think they do have a vested interest in how our dollars are spent and how our parents are utilizing resources and indeed how much information our parents and students actually have in the marketplace. Unfortunately, we've seen a number of other things develop in higher education. We've seen the proliferation of for-profit universities throughout the land in many industrial parks and street corners throughout the United States. Many of those institutions are not market-based institutions, but indeed they are they are direct student aid reliant institutions. And the challenge for us as a nation is how do we address this issue? By demonstrating good value? How do we demonstrate the fact that we want affordability? How do we ensure that our states stay engaged in funding higher education along with federal supplements and along with the federal government? So I think the timing is right to ask these questions. The timing is right to have another higher education debate one that we haven't had since 1972, one that we need to have to ensure that 10 years from now there will be student aid in the system. So there is indeed an urgency in this topic. There is an urgency in developing solutions because what truly is at stake is the fact that we will not have federal student aid in 10 years if nothing is done. So perhaps the worst thing we could be doing right now is to do nothing. In the first attempt to address this issue in the early 90s, it was higher education that unified in the early 90s to kill an idea called the sprees, 
which asked the states to step forward to regulate better which institutions were getting public money, which institutions deserved public money, and which institutions were doing a good job. Well, we unified as institutions throughout the nation as higher education organizations, and we indeed killed that idea. Well, now we're dealing with the aftermath of this idea and this concept, 20 years later. 20 plus years later, we're dealing with a system that is on the brink of going, that on the brink of losing student aid. And in fact, the best example that we have is that we spent 15 years trying to get summer Pell Grants for students. Because of the pressure on the system to back money out, to reduce the amount of student aid in the system because very little parameters have been put on the system, we lost summer Pell two years later, which we're still fighting to regain in the coming session and increasing sessions. So, Today, we're here with a panel of experts from the Department of Education. They picked four sites throughout the United States in each region of the country. They went to George Mason University in Northeast Virginia. They've been to Cal State Dominguez Hills in Southern Los Angeles. They've been to Northern Iowa University. And now, they've come to, to LSU to talk with Louisiana parents, citizens, presidents, others about what the federal government can do to sustain the current financial structure that we have in place so that we don't lose the funding that we have and our students don't suffer 5, 10, 15 years from now. So the panel of experts that I'm going to introduce to you are here to answer your questions, they're here to listen to your comments, and they're here to take inquiries into how this will develop in the next 16 to 18 months. This is a process of listening, it's a process of devising a new system that actually rewards institutions for doing things with the greatest public good. Currently, the only rankings that exist in the United States and rating systems that exist in the United States reward institutions and incentivize institutions for doing the exact opposite. They reward institutions for turning away as many students as possible. They reward institutions for spending as much money on the fewest amount of students as possible. So this is a challenge for our nation to develop a better system, not necessarily of rankings, but a better system of identifying which institutions are serving public missions, which institutions are serving the public good, and which institutions are still committed to the things that public higher education was committed to for decades in the past, before we all privatize and move away from these structures and move away from these commitments and missions.